Yeah, my name is Vipas Purichanon. Okay. Yeah. And um, wh where were you born? I was born in, in Bangkok and I was grew up in Bangkok mostly. Okay, yeah. and how long ago did you move to the UK? Um, very recently, just only I think two years ago. Yeah. Okay, so did you move for work or study? I moved it for study, I moved it to do my PhD here right. at Goldsmiths. Yeah. Okay. And so in your move from Bangkok to London, did you carry any charms with you or were you gifted any charms? <laughs> Um, I travels a lot and what happens before London, there was like, I was in Chicago, I was in a few places and then, and then because of the, the, the professions I need to travel as well. So at a certain moment, moment, I sort of knew that I couldn't carry anything like that because, because it, it's pretentious, it's, it's really, um, you have a responsibility for such an object and then um, sometimes you end up in a work that um, is, is getting really chaotic and then you won't be able to, to, to somehow take care of it. Yeah, so I think about four or five years ago I gave up any kind of like object charms. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so before you began traveling intensely, you mm -hmm. did carry these charms? I did have, yeah. yeah. And uh, what sort of charms were they? Um, several things, because I, 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 before that, when I was in Thailand, I liked to explore about this thing. And because my, uh, my grandpa, he's like um, the collector of, of this small amulet, like, like, like a um, Buddhist amulet. And then what happened was that, um, so he, he, somehow, he somehow also tried to make me carry it with me as well. So I did that for a while until I, when I was travels a lot, and then work a lot, and then, and then I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. So you say your father, uh, your grandfather, grandfather yeah. was a collector of amulets. Yeah. So what in his collection would you say was the most precious or the most special charm? Huh. Um, I, he collects sorts of things from like, um, like a bronze coin to the one that made from, from terracotta, but they all like carrying, um, carriers of all, so very small. Um, thing that he liked the most is actually, he got some that, um, there was like a competition as well. So they're basically a competition about, you know, about his collections that, you know, when, when, when they do like, a mass production of these charms from, 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 the, from the temple, the, um, the collect collector always collected, right? So, so they have these kind of competition and then he had like two or three of them that, that won or uh, have a second prize, third prize in the collections and then he's really, yeah, it's, it's, it's like the most important things in the collection for him. So does collecting more charms, was it more a religious practice or was it a hobby or where does it stand? Um, I think it stands um, mostly as a hobby and I think it's something really modern because I think before that um, even you collect charms but you collect it with yourself but, but for, for my grandparents they collect it in a safe, like, you know, in a box, and then it's almost like a museum collection somehow. So I think it's a mixture between like carrying with you and then collect it, collect it in a sense of like museum sense. Yeah. Right. So, so that means the form of collecting charms for their value as objects is a more modern practice. Yeah, I think it changed over time. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so, the charms you did have before you stopped carrying them, were they newer ones or more antique ones? Um, there's more antique one, definitely, and then it's, they, they came from my, gran my grandfather. And so I still have it, but I never travel with it. So it's somewhere in my rooms, 
in the house. Yeah. Right. And how would you use a charm and when would you call upon a charm? Or is a charm, is the spirit of the charm always with you? Or is it when in times of hardship? Or how does that stand? There was a moment that changed. Um, and I think it's quite interesting moment as well because um, I used to carry and then I used to think about keeping myself a tattoo, a, 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 a magic tattoo. And then, um, but a few years ago, I start, also start interested in, in the practice as well, which, which is meditation. And what happened was that one of the, one of the monks that I trained it with, he was like, he, 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 was, um, he was saying that if you, the charms can protect you, but it's a protection from somebody else. So you need to borrow this kind of magical charm protection from, let's say, um, your monks from um, the Buddhist monk from that temple, from this temple, and so on and so on. But if you practice meditation, if you practice um, the the sila, which is which is the precepts, and then then that thing will protect you, and that is your charms. And then when when I kind of glass that. Um, concept, I, I began to, to take it all out, and there was nothing in me, but um, it's more about be aware of doing all the good deeds, so it protects you. It's, it's more like that. It's, it has become now a more a spiritual exercise. It's become a spiritual exercise, yeah, you can, you can put it that way as well. Okay. Yeah, and then, and then I think the charm itself has become a practice. Yeah. Right. So for you now, protecting yourself via meditation is something you carry with yourself all the time. It's not an object anymore. It's not an object anymore. Okay. Yeah. So that's a transition you have made from yeah. carrying charms as objects. Or has that always been with you, the spiritual side of it? It's have been with me, um, but I remember when, when it was started, it was when, when I f do my first retreat in Thailand and then um, in, at the, the temple, the monk asked that everyone to take out all of your charms. And, and that's quite, for, for somebody, for, for a lot of people, it's quite, quite radical. But, but when, when it was explained that it makes sense, so if you if you want to somehow make yourself not scarred, I don't I don't think I don't think it's it's like that. It's more like you want to practice. You need to stop relying on other people. Then you you somehow can 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 make it your charms. Yeah. Okay. And having been exposed to all kinds of charms, your grandfather being a collector mm -hmm. to a more spiritual meditative sort of way of protecting yourself, what, what to you is the most important charm? Um, the most important charms? The most important charm? I think it's, 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 it's called mindfulness in English. It's, a thing. it's to, have, to have that mindfulness all the time. So, so you protect yourself from, from the bad deed you are going to do, or about to do, or, or the bad deed or some kind of expressions from other people that you knew that is coming to you. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just like this kind of. I'm not still not good at it, to be honest, but this is what I found very protective. Okay, so mindfulness is a very individual sort of state of being. So that means for you, charms is not so much a family or cultural thing, or is it a cultural? It, um, you can say it's quite cultural. You can, you can put it that way, because I feel like it's, it's embedded so much on, on um, Buddhist um, teaching. Yeah, and especially it's, it's embedded so much on, on like, um, more like a forest monk traditions. OK. Yeah. And do you practice your meditation and mindfulness mm -hmm. in a group or individually? 
Um, I tend to go to retreat every every year, but I do it every day, um, individually. Okay, yeah. right. And this retreat is it in the UK or back in Bangkok? Um, they have um, several meditation center, but the one that um, right now I'm going is the one in UK. All right. Yeah. And what to you is the biggest difference between the way your grandparents and parents used? charms to the way you use charms how has it changed i think i stopped relying on otter that's that's the most important part um, there were a moment that um, there was like one of the precepts that i keep on doing which is um, to respect all the gods from every country from every religious but not expect anything from them that's basically the whole thing about idea about you, you need to work on it by yourself. Okay. Yeah. That's, so that a kind of perspective shift that happens. Right. Yeah. So it's become a very spiritual individual exercise for you with travel and you know yeah. moving away from your community. Okay. And can you tell us about some other kinds of charms you have been exposed to say tattoos or chants or prayer? Mm -hmm. um, I think tattoo quite interesting because one of the, the chains that had made for me not only because of meditation retreat but also going to, to the temple and then ask for the tattoo to be you know, put into your body, your skin and then um, there were certain kind of practice that coming with the tattoo as well. Let's say you want a tattoo, um, you want to have a major tattoo at your back, and then you need to practice certain kind of, you need to accept certain kind of precepts. Let's say you cannot, um, one, one of them that's interesting was like, you cannot um, crawl under the, um, I think it's like, it's called, it's a woman, woman dress, skirts, basically. You not kind of crawl under or something like that. It's it's kind of really, it's really weird, and then from from the modern perspective, it's really weird. Um, but then I thought about that again. After a while, I felt like I cannot do this, do this because most of the times, I don't know. I I I don't know how to. I mean, the more the modern way of living sometimes not allowing you to, you, you to be able to be specific on all those gestures. Yeah. And what else? Chanting. Chanting quite interesting. Chanting chanting's taking quite different way than being a protection, but perhaps more... If you know the translation of all the chants, um, let's say the Buddhist chant from, from, from in the morning when they do like a, a normal day of service, this is um, it's more about reminding yourself what you need to do, what you need to be aware of. So I, I accept it in that way as certain way in which you reminded yourself as a practice. Yeah. Right. And in your shift from Bangkok to London, what do you think is the most significant difference between the communities back in Bangkok and the British Thai communities? Oh, okay. Um, I haven't experienced them that much okay. because I'm not quite um, a person that commune in the in the temple. Yeah, I um, I think it's hard to tell the difference, basically, because um, when you, you you somehow carry your practice with you everywhere as well, right? And then and then when when it's come together. Um, I think it's re they resonate a lot with, with, with what Thai Buddhism is in Thailand practice. Yeah. Okay, and you're a photographer yourself, aren't you? Um, I'm doing some photography, but I'm photography, but I'm, I'm not. Uh, but I'm, you're a creative. But um, I'm a curator. Uh, you are a curator. So yeah. um, from a curator's perspective, what, how do you look at a charm? Uh, a physical object. Do you look for the aesthetic or the the story behind the charm, mm -hmm. or say, supposing you had to curate an exhibition on charms? <laughs> yeah. How would you approach it as a curator? 
actually I'm doing it right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this time, though, I. You see the shams they itself having certain kind of um, notion of being a collection. Yeah, that you cannot you cannot deny that facts as well. But um, I'm more interested right now in an abstract way of doing things. So so um, in the exhibition that we are doing right now for for the effects as well, we are thinking about the the charms that has not. Um, how how to do we as a curator artist working together pre to present um, with the photographer um, Nora um, to to present the charms that is not an object which is a charisma right yeah. so the charisma of an object of rather an, than the object yeah, itself yeah charisma of of the practice even of the practice yeah. okay right thank you very much thank you. Good time.